Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of SDR Console for FMDX. My name is Bryce Foster and today we're going to build on episode 1 which was just simply the basics of installing SDR Console and tuning to an FM station. And today I'm going to turn the focus to FMDXers, people like myself who are looking to receive weak signals and quickly identify them and move around and use SDRs to maximize this weak signal reception of FM broadcast signals. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about some more advanced settings in SDR console, including a couple that we touched on in episode one. We're gonna talk about optimizing the view and contrast settings and the waterfall in SDR console to help spot DX a little bit more quickly. We're gonna talk about some basic broadcast FM settings that are in SDR console that you'll wanna look at, as well as a couple of little navigation tips and tricks. So first I wanted to launch into the display settings and I think that this is a really, really important topic for SDRs. Really one of the main benefits of using SDRs versus a traditional FM tuner that you might click around or use on your desktop, um, your physical desktop and not your computer. The benefit of an SDR is that you can see this waterfall, this display, this visual marker of your FM band over a large area of bandwidth. And this really helps spot weak signals that are popping up out of the noise that are maybe the DX that you want to chase. So the default settings in SDR console are okay, but they're not really optimized for the kinds of signals that you might receive in FM DX. And the first one, the first setting that I wanted to talk through is contrast. So you'll see the basic colors here. Uh, that are set up out of the box from SDR console. And these have signals that are strong in kind of a yellow color, and then the background in blue, and then some white in the middle. Now, setting up this contrast to a tighter range is something that I've found helps spot weak signals coming up out of the noise. So I'm gonna go to this bar on the right side of the screen, which controls this contrast range, and I'm gonna grab the edge of it, pull it down and narrow this. If you're looking at the numbers, this is about a 30 dB range that I go to, 60 is the default. So I'm in the range between minus 90 and minus 120. And you'll see this color palette looks kind of washed out. All the signals have turned yellow and the background is kind of white. This is not optimal, so I'm gonna grab this in the middle and drag this upward in my case to where the background noise is going to be a dark blue kind of color back here and then my signals are going to be dark or bright yellow for the strongest signals and then kind of a white or bluish color for medium strength signals. And this really for me helps spot when signals come up out of the noise. I think that you will find the same thing. I would recommend just dialing this into your own preference, but I would strongly recommend something like 30 or 40 dB for contrast. Now talking about some other ways that we can customize this waterfall. First of all, we can drag this window to control the split between the waterfall, which is the historical view over the last, say 10 or 20 seconds. And then this live band scope up here at the top we, and, and there's this barrier here in the middle that um, is the marker between the two. And we can simply grab this and drag it and drop it to control the ratio here that we want. I like the way that I just had it set, which is to have maybe a quarter or a third in the live band scope and then the waterfall occupying most of the screen. To me, this helps me spot DX that's happened over the last 10 or 20 seconds and is really my preference, but I would recommend dialing this into your needs. So this is one of the navigational concepts of SDR console. The other one is this kind of grid setup and snapping that you can use to arrange windows in SDR console. So for example, the receive window is something that's by default on the left-hand side of the screen. You can hold down toward the edge of this with your mouse as a left click and then simply start to move it and you'll see that it undocks and allows you to snap this window, which is just an example, any window can be moved like this to different parts of the screen. So here in the middle, you can see that this allows me to go up, down, right or left. And let's say I wanted to move this to the right hand side of the screen, I would hover my mouse over the right hand side, I would release my left mouse, which I've had held down, and then you'll see this window moves over to the right hand side of the screen. Now you can also resize things by, gra by grabbing the borderline 
here and sliding with your mouse while holding down your left mouse button and this will make the windows wider or narrower. I'm going to go ahead and move this back to the left hand side of the screen which I find preferential and is the default and then I'm going to again drag and resize it here. Okay, so basically anytime you want to rearrange windows in SDR console, it's going to work that way. And you can play around with this to find your preferred layout of where everything sits. I kind of like the default, but that is up to you. Okay, so moving on now in the view tab um, and continuing the theme of layouts. I also wanted to talk about, we talked about contrast. Uh, you can also change the color palette. So we talked about the yellow and, and, and blue and white. You can change this to, for example, to a color palette that might be more red or green, or perhaps a black and white if you prefer something lower contrast. And you can play around with these. There's about a dozen default settings. I like the um, blue and white color that is the default out of the box. And you can also go and customize this if you want. I'm not gonna go into detail there but you might find that helpful. Additionally, you can control the resolution as one of the options in the waterfall. And I think this is best displayed by just picking a different, a different one than the default. The default is an X4 on the increase side. So this is higher resolution, which is going to show more details and the signals that are showing up. And I like the default. If you have a computer that is perhaps resource challenged, like an older computer that you find is not performing very well in SDR console, I'd recommend going into reduce, maybe start with reduce divide by four instead of X4. And you'll see that this sort of makes the display lower resolution, a little bit more grainy. But for FMDX, really, I think even these lower resolution settings are fine. Uh, the reason why you might want a really high resolution setting would be for some of the bands with narrower signals. FMDX is relatively wide bandwidth for individual signals and the signals tend to be fairly strong. So again, I'm gonna go back to the default here. There's nothing wrong with the default unless you have a computer that struggles a little bit with SDR console. Okay, so you can also adjust the speed of the waterfall here, how fast the signals scroll by. The default is 40. I can click here in 80 and you'll see the speeds, the waterfall way up and you'll see these timestamps going by fast. You can also reduce the speed to something slower. I like the default, which is 40. And windowing, this is some, an advanced option that I'm not going to review here. Um, and then there's a couple other things you could play with. There's this crazy 3D waterfall mode, for example. Um, and then there's also markers, which some FMDXers use to display signals and make notes for themselves. For example, if you are a new FMDXer and wanna help remind yourself of where your local signals are and what they're called, you could use a marker to put a little um, text box up above a particular frequency that displays what the frequency is. So I could hit add current here. I could type in WCAI, which is the name of the signal I'm tuned to. And then I'll need to go back in to configuration under markers and then hit enable. And that will enable this marker here, which has an arrow and then the text that I just defined showing me that this local signal right here is called WCAI. I will not cover the details here, but I just wanted to point out that these markers are here and are a way that some FMDXers like to use customized display settings in SDR console. Okay, so moving on to the next topic, I'm gonna to go back to the home tab here and talk through something that I skipped over in the first video, which are tuner specific settings in SDR console. So as I mentioned, SDR console supports a wide range of SDR hardware and every different SDR hardware developer has different settings that they want to enable users to take control of. So I'm using the SDR Play RSP Duo, as I mentioned in the first video, which is one of those radios that has a wide amount of control that a user can exhibit on their own. So I can control the gain, for example, I can crank it all the way up and overload the radio here, or I could bump it all the way down and you would see I'm only receiving the strongest signals. I'm gonna go back to the default mode um, which is well suited for this particular radio and my antenna. But I did want to just sort of demonstrate that these are radio specific and they will vary depending on what radio you're using. I have a different radio, the ELAD FDM S2, which only has three or four options because 
it does not allow you to control its gain. It does that automatically and it doesn't have selectable antennas. It's more basic and only allows you to, to change a few things. So your mileage is gonna vary depending on what SDR you're going to use. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this section here and how it might look different on your screen. So your mileage may vary. And skipping around here a little bit, I also wanted to talk about something that you will want to go and play with, which in the tools ribbon here and options, these are some of the more advanced program options in SDR console. Most of these are not relevant to FMDX, but they might be relevant to optimizing SDR console with your computer, perhaps. Um, I'll let you kind of go through these and play with these on your own. But in video one, I promised I would review how to change the default frequency tuning steps. So when we were scrolling around in the first video, 50 kilohertz is the default for broadcast and wide FM, which is not really intuitive for most regions in the world. Most um, countries have their FM broadcast stations spaced at 200 kilohertz. Some in Europe and South America use 100 kilohertz steps. Um, I like to do 100, um, but you could also pick whatever you want here. I would recommend either one or 200, depending on your geography and preference. Um, I had already changed this to 100 here, but just wanted to show how you could change that step. So now when I scroll with my mouse, you'll see I change 100 kilohertz at a time um, or 0.1 in the megahertz display here on the right. So if I do one scroll, it'll bump to 89.8, and then one more scroll will give me 89.9. And then ultimately, I love to just mouse scroll around the whole band, which is usually how I change frequencies. Um, and that makes it a lot more intuitive to have that set that step set correctly. Okay, one other setting I touched on in the first video and, and promised I'd expound upon, when you hover your mouse here on the top right of the scope, you'll see these uh, buttons all pop up. We talked a little bit about zooming and centering in video one. You can also set the low and high range. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, move this out a little bit just to display what I'm talking about here. So on this live band scope, you can adjust the signal threshold. So I can pull this down for example, on the low side, which is gonna put the noise, the bottom of the display right around the noise floor. And then I can take high and adjust this. If I want the signals to appear kind of taller, I could go like this and you would really see um, a high level of detail here on the top half of the screen. Um, I like the defaults. Really, I don't mess with this too much. I just kind of set it and forget it. But I would recommend playing around Depending on your gain settings and your radio, this might uh, be something you want to optimize on a regular basis just to make sure that you're seeing a wide range of contrast. And again, signals are popping out to you. Okay, so moving on, I went through one setting mode that was more SDR console generic settings here in the tools and options. Um, for FMDXers, there is a broadcast FM mode specific set of settings. And I would recommend remembering this and pinning this and always checking and making sure that you have your settings dialed in here. And that is under the receive pane and broadcast FM. So if I click down on this, I get a few different options and I can just click the first one, which is options dot dot dot. And this will pull up a really important set of settings that you'll wanna dial in for your region. And the first checkbox I wanna encourage everyone to check is show PI code. So that is a field in RDS that I assume you know about. And then you can also um, change the size of the RDS window here. You can toggle stereo or mono, again, very FM specific or FM broadcast specific settings. You can change your audio de-emphasis. And then I would recommend for most people, we'll talk about this more in another video, but to enable DX mode, which makes the RDS display a little bit more sensitive, um, exchanged for a little bit less accuracy. So these settings right here, and I'm gonna check RBDS, are what I would recommend for North American DXers. And for European DXers, you would just change the de-emphasis and perhaps use RDS for the rest of the world. And then we'll go through some more, R these are all RDS specific settings in these other um, three tabs on the left side. We'll talk about that in the RDS video. Okay, and I mentioned pinning things 
to favorites. So up at the top, and I'll just say real quick that a lot of people find the ribbon layout of SDR console to be unintuitive or it's too slow or they don't remember what setting is in what ribbon. If you're one of those people, I would definitely recommend optimizing the quick access toolbar, which is the thing all the way at the top here. So on the right side of all these little icons, you'll see a drop down that says customize quick access toolbar. So you can customize the things that are up here at the top, which are independent of the ribbon. So as you move from ribbon to ribbon, these will always stay pinned at the top of the screen. And if you remember what the icons are, you can pin all of your favorite settings that you find yourself accessing the most here at the top. So first I'm gonna go and uncheck some of the stuff that I don't want. And these are all just defaults that will come out of the box with SDR console. I'm just gonna leave start, stop, and radio select. So that's kind of the home button, the stop button, start button, and this little folder right here. Those are things I use fairly commonly. And then if I wanted to do something like add broadcast FM, which is a setting that I find myself accessing a lot, I could right click in the middle of the icon here and hit add to quick access toolbar. And you'll see this little music note carries itself up here to the quick access toolbar. And I can click on this, I can click straight in and this will pop up the spectrum, which we'll talk about in the next video. Or I can click on the right hand side and I get those same uh, drop down as, as is available here up at the top of the screen. So if I'm in the home page, perhaps adjusting the gain of my SDR, but instead of going over to the other ribbon, I just wanna to quickly toggle stereo off and put it in mono, I can click up here and make that change very quickly without having to navigate between ribbons. So again, you can customize this to your needs with as many or as few things in the quick access toolbar up here at the top. And this is something I would definitely recommend optimizing just to get comfortable navigating quickly around SDR console and focusing on DX. Okay, so I this is as much as I wanted to cover in this video. I think we've done a lot to set up our display. We've enabled some basic RDS settings that make FMDX much easier, especially for North American DXers where you see the call sign pops up here. Um, we talked a little bit more about some more advanced display settings. We talked about the options uh, area of SDR console and optimizing the quick access toolbar. So with that, in the next episode, we'll discuss a little bit more about RDS and the uh, go in deeply about all the different settings that are available in SDR console. We'll also talk a little bit about filtering and adjusting the width of your filters here in SDR console, which is something that's very relevant to RDS. And um, we'll have a few more episodes beyond that with some more advanced topics. I look forward to doing those and hope you'll tune in. And until next time, happy DX and thank you.